Okay, so today um, I'm going to kind of walk through uh, the structure of building walls uh, in Revit. So I've basically got a, a default architectural template um, project opened up here. Um, I'm going to go up here to the wall tool and you might default to this generic 8 inch if you just click the, down, the drop down menu and come up here. I'm going to use the brick on metal stud uh, wall type here just to to use to kind of get into things. So if I draw a wall here, yours may look something like this. It doesn't have any of the, any of the detail or anything to it. Um, if that's the case, I would come down here to this tiny little box here that says detail level. Uh, you would probably set the course. If you change it to fine, you will be able to see all the, the different layers of that wall. So what we have here is the, the makeup of our wall. We've got our, our brick layer, we've got an air cavity, we've got our exterior sheathing, our metal stud layer, and then our interior finish, which is probably a gyp board or drywall. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to grab this wall, we're going to come up here and hit edit type, and then go into edit structure. Um, so when you come in, it'll probably look something like this. Uh, th and just like I said, these are the layers of the wall. So we've got our, our brick layer, that's our exterior finish layer, our thermal air layer that's three inches thick. Um, we have a membrane layer that has only membrane layers are allowed to have a zero, uh, zero thickness. So if you have it set to anything else, it will not let you have a, a zero thickness on that. Um, then you've got a substrate uh, that's three quarters, that's your exterior sheathing your structural layer that's your metal stud and then an interior uh, vapor barrier and then a gyp board layer. So basically this is uh, the makeup of that wall. If we want to see that graphically outside of just the project we can hit this preview button down here and pull that out. Um, like you saw when mine opens up once you have kind of opened it before it'll default to in here. Uh, yours may also look like this. Um, if that's the case, you're basically seeing a piece of exactly what you we saw in the project down here. If you want to see it in section form, you can come down here into this view and switch it to section and see an upright kind of vertical um, version of this. Now, when you're in this view, you can zoom in, zoom out. Um, that way you can kind of get a little bit closer and see what's going on there. Um, but the way that this this works. Um, we've got our, our finish layers, we've got our, our thermal layers, we can set up uh, various um, different functions for them. So obviously we have, we have structure, we've got substrate, we've got thermal and air layers, we've got finish one, finish two, and then membrane layers. So the reason that fi you're, there's a finish one, finish two uh, is basically even if I had an interior um, let's say I had an interior wall that had drywall on both sides. If for whatever reason one of those drywalls was slightly different from the other, I could set up a finish two. And when those, uh, when those walls connect, you'd see a small little line that would break where finish one ended and where finish two ended. So that can, can come into play and can make a difference in how, how it graphically displays itself um, and throughout creating a project. <coughs> now the rest of this is all fairly self-explanatory. You've got your thickness, so how thick is the brick? Three and five eighths. Um, how thick is your air layer? You can just come in here and punch in whatever thickness you want. Uh, and then when you're assigning the materials, if you click in this box, you'll see that little dot 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 um, dialog box uh, icon pop up. If you click that, it'll open up the material editor and you can select whatever material uh, you would like to assign to that um, to that little space there. So let's say we wanted to add let's say we wanted to add a layer to here uh, to this to this wall. And maybe it's a maybe we add a secondary um, secondary finish on top of the gyp wall. So maybe we're we're drywalling, but we're only using that drywall for its half hour fire rating or something. And then we're going to apply some sort of uh, finish beyond that. So if I click a, a row down here and then I hit insert, it's going to throw in a default little layer. And then I can move it up and down with these two keys down here. 
and I, so I can move it all the way to the outside. And then because it's going to be a finish, I'm going to say it'll be a finish too, so that way it's it's still on the same side as this. And then we'll say this is going to be three quarters of an inch thick. So now if you see I've got a three quarter inch thick layer that's jumped to the outside here. And I could come in and say, okay, I'm going to make this whatever it happens to be. Maybe we're going to turn some flooring sideways or something to do some sort of wood paneled wall. Um, so as I as I kind of select those various um, those various items, it kind of populates this this preview over here. So another uh, another aspect that you can see in in this are these kind of tools down here. So the default wrapping, these we kind of talked about when uh, we were going over um, properties and type properties in the episode two of walls. Um, so if you want to get into those, this is just another extension of that uh, that's already in the edit type um, properties window. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that, but uh, this section down here is something that we'll we're going to get into. So modify the vertical structure. So what that means is we can kind of go in and add or take away or modify layers of this um, of this wall type. So maybe we have we have this wall set up and we want to display some sort of maybe we've got a four inch concrete block that's going to be set up at the bottom and then maybe we want some sort of sill that's going around here and then the brick takes off. Well, if all of those layers are going to be in a in a line other than the sill, we can do that with just a single wall type as opposed to many different wall types. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so beyond that, if if for whatever reason they were not going to line up, all these if all these layers were not going to line up, this is kind of null and void. Um, you can't all of a sudden take a layer here that's three and five eighths and then put a four inch layer directly below it and then start stacking varying thicknesses and everything on top of it. Um, that we'll get into in episode four uh, with stacked walls and, and that sort of thing. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create my uh, my concrete section down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and hit split region so the split region allows me to kind of go through and divide any of the layers that are here um, into two different sections. So you can see I, as I pull up, it shows me the dimension there. So I'm going to click and say, okay, three foot 11, that's fine. If I want to ever change that, I can come in and hit modify, grab that little uh, split region line and say, maybe I want this to be four foot six and it'll, it'll jump there. Now keep in mind that that line, this split, is always going to occur four foot six inches off of the bottom of the wall. Um, no matter how you set the top and bottom constraints of the wall, it's always going to occur four and a half feet off of the bottom. So then what we're going to do is we're going to create whatever material is going to go here. So I'm going to create it just below the brick, so I'm going to hit insert. I'm going to say this is a finish four, and I'm not going to apply a thickness to it. I'm going to wait on that. So I'm going to come into material, and let's say I use, we'll say concrete masonry units there. We'll say OK. So I've applied that, and now if I grab this, this layer here, I can say assign layers. And when I hit assign layers, if I click in this area, sometimes it'll take a few, you almost have to click on like close to a line there. You can see all of a sudden the hatch changed and if I deselect it, now all of a sudden I have the cut hatch of concrete masonry units. So what I've created is a four and a half foot concrete masonry section and then a, uh, a brick section everywhere above that. So as soon as I applied that, that region, that layer, you can see that now it populates my thickness to be the same as that brick um, brick thickness. So this is why you can't all of a sudden, if my brick or my concrete uh, masonry unit was a little bit thicker or my brick 
or maybe I have like stone down here and brick above and the stone was thicker than the brick, I can't display that in this manner. I have to use a stacked wall or something different. <coughs> so that is basically how split regions work. You can split the various uh, layers and then assign different layers to that. Um, if for whatever reason we decide, nope, this isn't working for us, we don't want to deal with this, we can hit merge regions and then go up to our split region here and you'll notice as I move across this line that arrow that's on that little split, uh, merge regions icon moves up and down. Basically what that's, what that's telling you is do you want this bottom region to merge into that region and take over that part or do you want the top region to merge into the bottom. So depending on which one you want to control and which one you want to keep that's the direction that you kind of want to go. So if I want to keep the brick, I want the the arrow facing down. So I'm going to use the top layer, take over the bottom layer, and that eliminates the that um, assigned layers default that's on there. So now I can get rid of that that concrete layers uh, since I'm not going to use it anymore. <coughs> so getting into some of these other tools, the sweeps and reveals. Um, if we hit sweep, uh, there's nothing in here right now, obviously, because we don't have any sweeps assigned to that wall. Okay, so if we go up here and hit load profile, um, it's going to open up this US Imperial library here, and we can scroll down and find this profiles tab or folder. So then in this profiles folder, uh, there's all sorts of different options here. So there's wall profiles, stair profiles, finished carpentry profiles. There's all sorts of different stuff. Um, so if we go to wall, let's say we want just a precast sill there. Um, there's also like brick courses, soldier courses. We can do sweeps, uh, cornices, all sorts of different things there. But let's just stick with something simple and we'll go with a precast uh, sill. So we'll hit open. It says this is already exists in the project, but um, we're going to say go ahead and override that. So once we've loaded that in, we're going to hit add. And we're going to add a, a wall sweep. So now that we've added it, this profile, we can see there's all these things loaded in. There's a couple of parapets, a couple of the ones that we saw in here um, already there. And then there's a couple different sill precasts that we just loaded in. There's a 12 inch one, a 5 inch one, and an 8 inch one. Uh, we'll just go ahead and go with the, the five inch. We can assign a material to it if we want to. We could go into the material editor and say, okay, maybe this is going to be a, a precast concrete sill or something like that. So we could come down here and say concrete precast. Now the distances um, and everything else that's going on here, uh, we'll see how those work here, here in a second. Um, so the w other two things that uh, you'll, you'll want to look at are cuts wall and cuttable. So cuts wall means that it is actually going to encompass part of the wall here. Uh, so if we did not have that selected, the brick would continue running through and the whatever part of the sill just sticks out, that's the only thing that would, that would show up. Normally, you want it to cut the wall because if you're adding something like this, you don't want it to graphically show the brick coming down and through, and then all of a sudden this little kind of nub sticking out there. You want to actually show the full profile of the the sweep that you're creating there. And then cuttable, uh, depending on what it is, <clears throat> most of the time you'll probably want it to be cuttable, but it may depend on what kind of, of sweep you're creating there. Uh, cuttable basically means if I put a door in this wall and it cuts out a hole in this wall, is it also going to cut out a hole in my sill, in my sill that's running around there? So obviously I don't want my sill running straight through a doorway, so I'm going to say it is cuttable. That way, whenever, the, uh, whenever I place an opening, a window, a door, or something like that that happens to overlap with this sill, it will all of a sudden cut that out as well. So we'll say OK. And now if we zoom in down here, we can see see this uh, concrete sill. Now we just need to get it into position of where we want it. Um, so if we go back into this, we can say, okay, 
Um, distance, let's say we jump this, we'll say three feet. And then we'll hit apply. So that jumps up from the base to the bottom there, three feet. <coughs> um, and you can also set this whether you want this uh, whether you want this sweep to be top dependent or bottom dependent. And basically what I mean by that is when I set this three feet, do I want to say that it's always going to this uh, the sweep is always going to occur three feet from the bottom of the wall? Or maybe I want it to always occur three feet from the top of the wall. I could change that to the from the top of the wall. So it just depends on what you want it, how you want to control this. Um, if you're doing a cornice or something like that, obviously you'd probably do it from the top of the wall rather than the bottom of the wall, depending on you know what's going on at the bottom. The base of your wall might be changing, but the top probably won't. Um, then you can also say, is this sweep going to occur on the exterior or the interior side? So if I all of a sudden flip that to interior, it would jump to the other side there. Um, so we're going to keep that on the exterior side. And then the offset and the setback. So offset, if I punch in, say, three inches there and apply that. So it moves three inches off of the the face of the of this kind of controlling point here. Um, the controlling uh, the controlling face is actually the very exterior of the wall. It's just that when this was created, they made it so that the profile always lined up, this kind of point always lined up with the edge there. So maybe we don't want the point hitting that right at that point. Maybe we want to give it like a half inch of, of flat before it starts to taper off. So we could adjust that back and forth with the offset. So if I say okay, I'm going to I'm going to say this is this looks good. I'm okay with how this this is working and I'm going to back out here and then go to my 3D view. And if I go to my 3D view, you can see now I've got this little sill here um, that runs around runs along my wall. And if I were to turn the corner here, I've got to flip the other side there. If I turn the corner, now that profile actually wraps the corner as well. So it, it actually miters the corner and creates a nice, a nice detail with it. Um, so depending on how my, how my walls are set up, if I have the same detail running around my entire building, this can be a good way to go about getting, um, getting that kind of detail to show up. Um, so getting back into the structure tab here, if we go into reveals, uh, we'll go ahead and hit add. It's the same sort of situation. Um, maybe we want a brick course reveal of two bricks. We'll say, okay, yeah, that works. It's on the exterior side from the base. We'll say we want it to come up, say, six inches. And you'll notice I can add as many of these as I want. I could do multiple reveals on something um, and, and create a, a certain look um, if, I'm after, if I'm after that. So if I hit apply, I'll zoom in down here. So you're going to see a big, um, <clears throat> like a big block. You're not going to, since this is a reveal, you're not going to actually see something protruding out there. It's just going to eat away at the layer there. So right now it says it's six inches from the top. Um, it has a built-in sort of setback here. Uh, we can also use the, the offset um, tool. So maybe we'll give this an offset of, we'll say 0.5 inches, and we'll hit apply. And so, with reveals, it obviously it moves the opposite direction. So reveals are going to move inward with positive amounts, and then the sweeps are going to move out from the wall with positive amounts. I can also hit flip, and it'll kind of flip this vertically um, up and down. So the distance here is six inches. It was six inches from the bottom, um, but now it's six inches from the top. So uh, if we flip that back, so depending on how you want to, maybe you want six inches from you know, like the base of the wall to the top of the reveal to be a certain, you can set that up. And <clears throat> actually, now that I'm now that I'm sitting here and thinking about this setback a little bit more, um, we can't see what setback is doing here. Uh, 
because basically essentially what the setback does is it controls when you have openings or um, or like penetrations in the wall so maybe we want maybe we want a reveal to stop you know short of a door so we don't want that reveal to come up and butt right to the door we actually want that detail to stop like a foot off of the door because we're going to do something special around the door or something like that um, we could say we want it to set back from the opening you know six inches or something like that so then you would end up with uh, the door opening six inches of just normal wall and then your reveal would start and take off from there um, sorry i seem to it just blanked on that one. Um, it's not something that I use a whole lot. Um, and actually, these reveals and uh, sweeps aren't something that I actually use a whole lot. Um, I tend to do stuff in a slightly different manner um, that I'll show a little bit later. But if this, if you have a certain project and this, is a, a, this works for you, great. It can save a ton of time on stuff. Um, it's just that a lot of times these sort of things don't always work out. Um, the way that you want them to. A good example of this, um, let's go ahead and go back out to our 3D view so we can see our little reveal there um, and how that's working. Let's say uh, <clears throat> if you have a perfectly flat site and you have a, a similar uh, kind of wall type running all the way around, this is awesome. This works fantastic, perfect, um, exactly what you want. If you do not have a flat site, which many 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 times and most of the time I would say is not the case um, that this doesn't work real well because if all of a sudden uh, maybe I have a step in my foundation uh, which is you know fairly typical um, so if I've got a sloping site and I have a step in my foundation now all of a sudden this detail is this works fine that works fine until all of a sudden I get to the step. Now, how does it resolve that? It doesn't. It just says, okay, I'm just going to stop this at this level, stop that at that level. And then if all of a sudden I want my, my next wall that turns the corner here, maybe this actually sits up so that it's even with that. Now all of a sudden that detail's off. So these types of things are the reason why these sweeps and reveals sometimes don't work real well. So <clears throat> they can be great if you have a similar kind of plane running around the entire thing, but as soon as you get into slopes and offsetting, you know, wall bases and things like that, it kind of throws everything for a loop. Um, so like I said, if you have a perfectly flat site or you have a run of maybe the entire front of your building kind of moves in and out and has these details to it, that's great. You can use these. Um, but in many situations, these, these don't work out as well as we would like. Um, so that's a, a quick kind of rundown of sweeps and reveals and then the general structure of, of the wall tool.